What is happening guys? My name is Mike and this is Modern Man TV, home of product reviews, tutorials, and unnecessary hand movement. Today we got some cool stuff to go through and actually we got a lot of it to get through. There's a ton of products in this line we're looking at today. So of course we're gonna be going through all the regular stuff like specs, demos, and forced hand movement. Yep, so much to get through today. Roll that intro. Trade Union Supply. This is the brand we're focusing on today. For those that have never heard of this brand, they come from North Carolina, right here in the US of A. And their story starts like a lot of others we have seen on the channel in the past, with a search for grooming products that met their needs. Today we are gonna send the major items from this brand across the desk and get a full look at what they offer. Here we go. Coming across my desk today are a bunch of products from the Trade Union Supply Company. Handmade and healthy is the idea here and we've got a total of 8 examples to get through, starting first with the matte clay pomade. According to the brewer, the matte clay pomade is a firm holding low shine to matte finish water-based clay pomade that's ideal for volumized and textured styles. It's also made to scoop easy and distribute evenly throughout the hair and remain pliable all day. Looking inside the jar, we're met with a typical clay pomade in appearance, but it does slightly differ in the waxy feel it exhibits when it's first scooped out. Once it's in the palm though, it breaks down very easily with very little resistance. Moving on to the water-based pomade. Again, according to the brewer, this is an unorthodox water-based pomade that's made with natural ingredients that are nourishing to the hair rather than drying and provides a medium hold with high shine. It's also made in a four ounce plastic jar and scented with a spicy, musky, and sweet natural scent. Looking inside the jar, we're met with a very clean looking white pomade that has a very nice breakdown. I'm actually pretty obsessed with the texture of this product. It's smooth, sticky, and almost wet, but still thick. It scoops out with no issue and breaks down very easily, but with some smooth, visible tack. And last, we have the hemp oil-based pomade. This is described as a petroleum-free hemp seed oil-based pomade that provides everything you love about an oil base without the hassle of it sticking around forever. It's also described as a medium hold and natural to high shine styling product and is made with woodsy undertones with fresh musky notes for the scent. Inside the jar on this one, we're met with a pretty tough exterior on the pomade. You do need the back of your thumb to scoop this one out, but once it's out, it actually breaks down very easily and becomes totally spreadable into the hair. Time to put these to use. Let's start with the Old Base Pomade. This one was the easiest to judge, obviously, as one can usually tell right away when an oil base isn't doing its job. I'm adding in my scoops here on clean, damp hair, as usually the way with oil base, and its slickness and easy gliding persona really gives way to a waxy and sticky presence in the hair. This is great, though, for both sculpting and styling as we reach the final style with this product. Now let's go ahead and reset to the other end of the spectrum and the water-based pomade. For this one, I'm adding it into dry hair as the product already almost feels wet. I feel like if I were to add it into wet hair, it would probably work, but I would also most likely get no volume out of it. We can see that this was a good choice when I apply it to the hair as the product makes the hair feel almost wet anyway. So I'll be relying on my hair's natural volume and structure to get that desired style. Combing and styling is also really nice because there's no tug and pull at all. I did notice though that some of that tack I found in the breakdown didn't quite actually make it all the way into the hair. Easily enough, however, we are able to reach a solid style with this product. And finally, the clay pomade. For our last demo today, we're resetting the hair and starting again on clean, dry hair. No pre-stylers or tonics today, just me and the clay, and as we add it in, we can see a nice, slick finish begin to form on the hair. And of course, the pomade sliding directly over the hair and taking a comb very well. It's definitely got more hold than the water-based pomade, but the matte finish surely isn't making an appearance today. But nicely enough, our volume seems to have shown up and taken charge here in the final style. 
Now we got a few more items to look at today as well, but first let's talk about some endurance on these products. We got three items here, a clay, a water-based pomade, and an oil-based pomade. For time's sake, I didn't bother filming up full endurance tests for each one of these, but I did complete full eight-hour testing on all three. And I can tell you right away, the oil-based pomade by far held up the best, which honestly did surprise me as I wasn't sure how well it would do, being it's a petro-free formula. Oil-based pomades usually blow most products out of the water when it comes to endurance, and this one was a great example of that. It stayed slick and sticky for the full eight hours, and I was very happy with the results. The water-based pomade, or the unorthodox water base, I should say, also did fairly well. In total, the product lasted around six hours in my hair before it began looking deflated. It also stayed slick, so combing wasn't a problem, but it did lose a little bit of hold in there, so battling that deflation proved to be a little bit hard. Lastly though, we do have the clay, which I did film up because I didn't want to upset you folks any more than my hands probably already are. Looking at the four hour mark, we can see here the finish has lifted a little bit, but it hasn't quite shifted into a matte finish. Following up at the eight hour mark, we can see that not a lot has changed too, which is good. I do think some of the hold has evaporated so we can see some structural deflation going on there, but due to the fact that hold hasn't totally disappeared, restyling is still possible and actually works fairly well to reset the style. Now, Trade Union also sent me a few other items to take a look here and share with you guys. I really enjoyed looking into these as well. They sent over these pre and post shave oils. Apparently we're having a tornado. Longest siren ever. Oh, thank you. What they sent over here was these pre and post shave oils. The pre shave oil was actually really nice, but what it does basically is what the name suggests. It goes on the face prior to shaving to help the razor glide across the skin and achieve a close shave. The post shave oil then follows up to nourish the skin and prevent razor burn. They both contain nice and healthy ingredients like willow bark extract, safflower oil, aloe vera, witch hazel, all kinds of awesome stuff. Following along this same path is their beard and face oil. This is made to nourish the crap out of the beard and face and contains different oils than the two previously mentioned shaving tonics. This one contains things such as rose hip oil, rice bran oil, apricot kernel oil, and other awesome things like that. This one actually also works really well on the hair too for those that might be curious about that. Lastly here though, we do have some stash wax and beard balm. Let me just start by saying I don't actually have a full enough beard or mustache to fully take advantage of these two products, but based on the feel and consistency of the stash wax, I have no doubts it would work fine to create those killer Robin James mustache looks. And then those that prefer beard balms to tonics, which for me, they do almost the same exact thing, except though a beard balm can help you achieve an overall cleaner look with your beard if it's long and full enough. And this one contains again, those nourishing ingredients to help smooth out the beard, but it's also nice and thick. So it will work in nice in a fuller and more developed beard for a nice shape. <sighs> Man, I tell you what, I'm starting to actually kind of break a sweat doing this review. This is kind of nuts and somewhat sad. Switching our gears back over to the styling products, washing them out was actually really interesting. First of all, none of them rinsed out with water, which we can expect from the oil base, but interestingly enough, with the water base and the clay, they both resisted the water a little bit as well. They were though, in fact, no match for a little shampoo came straight out just fine. For the oil base though, being as this was a petro-free oil base, the washout wasn't as grueling. It actually responded really well to shampoo. And that brings us to conclusions. What do I think of these products in this brand? Let's start with the beard and shave items. I think they contain great ingredients. They work as described, no actual issues there with performance. All around, I'm pretty happy with those. If you're into shave items and looking for some new ones, I can definitely recommend those. For the styling products, the oil base, I can put my stamp of approval on as well. I think overall it's a well-made oil base and it works really well in the hair. It's a little on the waxy side, but it's also got some good slickness in there too. So you oil base guys might really enjoy that one. The water base though, to be totally honest with you, has me a little bit torn. The hold on there I thought was lacking a little bit, which surprised me as it broke down with a really nice tack and grip. But even with that little lapse in hold, it was still able to control the hair with its dampening and 
nourishing effect. For this reason, it reminded me a lot of Compass by Templeton Tonics. It has a very similar feel and performance in the hair, so it really easily compared to that for me. Lastly, the clay for me was really nice to try out. I thought it styled really well, but I really would have liked to see more of that matte finish come out a bit more than it did. Endurance, though, wasn't bad on this one, and the restyle there was really solid, so that's definitely a plus. And for me, if I had to name a few that worked similar to this, I would say both the Rock River Clay and the Nostalgic Grooming Clay. This one definitely reminded me of those a little bit. I think that's a pretty solid comparison there. If you would like to check out any of the products featured today, links will be available for you in the description there, along with a coupon code generously donated for you guys as subscribers to the channel to save you 15%. If if you enjoyed this video and found my hand movement tolerable, go ahead and hit that like button for me. I really appreciate that. And if you want to see more videos like this one, go ahead and tap on that beautiful subscribe button there. Remember, once we hit 25,000 subscribers, we're going to be throwing down one monster of a giveaway. It is going to be insane. So you can make that happen by hitting that button. And with that, I will once again say thank you for stopping by the channel today. I'll be back with you guys again very soon. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.